Audio Jungle. The Cleveland Browns. The dog pound. I don't know how you feel about the Cleveland Browns. They're randomly, they were so bad for so long, and now they're just like randomly amazing. Last season, they went on maybe the most epic run of all time where Shadon Watson gets hurt, and then they put in PJ, what's his name? PJ Walker, who was an XFL quarterback who played at Temple, and he goes and wins them a game. And then they bench him, sign Joe Flacco, who was sitting at home on the couch just hanging out. And Joe Flacco comes in and like unlocks the offense, unlocks was- David Njoku, like looks amazing for the for the regular season. And wow, that was it was such a run by the Browns last year. And it was it was pretty cool to watch them despite having ex- I mean, you lost your starting quarterback in Deshaun Watson and you after and you lose- seven games or something, six games. And- and then you lose uh, Chick Nub, and yeah. I mean th- those are, I mean those are like your two guys. So like it's pretty crazy that you go out and they had a record of eleven and six last season, and they crushed it. Yeah, second in the second in the AFC North, three and three in the division. If I'm not mistaken, eight and one at home, three and five on the road. Eight and one at home, three and five on the road. I mean. They their their key wins that stood out to me when I was looking at their schedule last season, and I remember watching them was the Ravens away game when the Ravens went up big and they like stormed back and like took the game by the horns. It's finally when Deshaun Watson like came into form and you were like, wow, the Browns might be back. And then of course he hurts his shoulder. But then and then the other win that sticks out to me on their schedule was the home game when San Fran came to Cleveland. And it was kind of the game that solidified them, I feel like, last season, where it was like a, yeah. it's a crappy game. It was rainy, like, and they just took care of business, made it ugly, and, and won that game. So their key losses, Denver. Denver beat so many random teams last year, so that it was makes, a key loss. It makes no sense. I had a loss to Cincinnati because I think they – did they lose to the Bengals when Joe Burrow got hurt? Or was that – I couldn't really tell you. I couldn't tell you. It would depend on what time of the season it was. Either way. Uh, and then Seattle. I had a loss to Seattle as, a bad, as one of their bad losses. <clears throat> okay, so a- anything about those key wins or key losses that you want to talk about, or should we move on? I mean, I just still can't believe that they made it this far with a Frankenstein quarterback room. So props to them. That defense was special, but we can dive into that here a little bit. So they're coaching a co- shout out to the coaching staff. They made that happen. They um, did. so key losses on the roster. Could, could you help me on this? I, I wasn't finding much. Uh, if you found something, let me know. I literally didn't have like any key, like real key losses on this defense or offense. Like, Obviously, the key, like, okay, let me rephrase that. They lost their two starting, like, they lost Jedrick Will, Wills and Jack Conklin to injury last season, but oh, they're okay. bringing them back. Yeah. So, like, they missed those two guys for pretty much a, for a good bit of the each, a, a good bit of the season, but like, they're bringing them both back. Um, I didn't really like, I have four new starters on defense, but I mean, Nobody really stood out as far as somebody that I'm like, oh wow, that moves the needle as far as losing. Because they did bring on here, they've Shelby, they brought in Shelby Harris, Jordan Hicks, Devin Bush, and Martin Emerson Jr. all on the defense. And then Jerry Judy was like the only new guy on offense outside of those two tackles coming back. Yeah, and and on top, so I don't think that they'll get Nick Chubb back next year. I'm not 100 percent sure, obviously, but it seems like he's taking Rehab the slow and sure, recovery. slow and steady. Yeah, yeah. Like he got hurt, but listen, everybody can say what they want about Deshaun Watson on the off-field stuff. I'm not gonna talk about that at all. I'm gonna just talk strictly on-field. There was a point in time where Deshaun Watson led the league in passing, and he was extremely special. And MVP level. MVP played at an MVP level, and I find it extremely hard to believe that we'll never watch Deshaun Watson ever get back to that point ever again in his career. I just don't think it'll happen. So. 
I think getting Deshaun Watson back as much as people probably are like out on him, I, I think that he's back this season. I, I want to see him have a big year. And I, I think it would be great for football if he does. I'm not going to say um, I'm I'm not out on him either. I don't know if we're ever going to see him get back to that MVP level, but I think we're going to definitely see him take a jump from this season or from last season to this season. I would be shocked if he wasn't better. I mean, he only got to play six games and we did see some six or seven games and we did see some flashes after mm -hmm. not playing for a full season. Like, what do you realistically expect from like the most important guy on the field? Like you're going to go through grow. It's almost like he was not necessarily a rookie because he's been there before, but taking a year off and not playing and also kind of still dealing with all those off field distractions. Like we don't really know where his head was at and it's, he had a lot going on. So I think this year he's got a great opportunity, almost like a clean slate pretty much. Like he doesn't have to worry about that off field stuff. He has a great team around him. He can just focus now on going out there and playing football. And I think we'll see a much better version of Deshaun Watson this season. I agree. And I want to touch on the Nick Chubb health real quick. Even not getting him back this year, as much of an X factor as Nick Chubb is, I don't think it's the end of the world. Last year they had an extremely good run game with supplemented by Kareem Hunt, Jerome Ford, and whoever the hell else they had running out there and, and running yeah. the football. So I, I'm not like sitting here saying that, like not having Nick Chubb is the end of the world. Like what if they get him for a playoff run? Like that could be a difference for them. Uh, keep him healthy during the regular season. And I think who you have in the building right now. And I think that they can even add somebody and figure it out because Kevin Stefanski always has a good run game uh, with these teams. Yeah, their running back room isn't even, like, terrible. Like, I'm looking at it right now. They've got Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford, Dante Foreman, and Naheem Hines. That's even better than what I thought it was, honestly. That'll do. I mean, it almost feels like you can put anybody behind this offensive line, and they'll be just fine. So, I mean, we saw Jerome Ford kind of go off for a couple weeks. He was good. He's, like, kind of, like, low-key good. Um, additions, um honestly one of my favorite d tackles from this year's draft was michael hall jr from ohio state you're adding him to this jim schwartz defense i don't know i think that they can unlock him a little bit like i i just like the situation that he landed in landed in and then like you said you they went and traded for jerry judy who at this point in jerry judy's career we really don't have a clear understanding of what he is as a player um he's never had consistent quarterback play what i do know is like he, I don't think he's, he's as good as that first round tag was put on him all those years ago. And I think that's fair to say at this point, right? I think it's absolutely fair. Um, I think he's going to be a good wide receiver too, moving yeah. forward. And he does, that's all that he has to be. Like Amari Cooper's still good. So I, I think he actually landed in a good spot where he doesn't have to go out there and be the number one guy. Like he's got... He's got Amari Cooper. He's got a real. They got a really good run game. They've got David and Joku. He's got a much better quarterback situation. So, uh, I think I think we'll see a better version of Jerry Judy this year. I'm not saying he's going to go like fucking crazy or anything, but yeah, I think we'll start to see a little bit more consistency with him. That's fair. Um, what makes this team special? Honestly, the two things that I have written down here is coaching staff. Um, Kevin Stefanski's a a great offensive mind. I think he's proven it. He took Baker Mayfield to the playoffs. He took a team last year to the playoffs who didn't have any business with their quarterback room. He's able to get these guys to play way above expectation. The O-line's good. The O-line's great. The run game's solid. The passing game's solid. And they get things done. And then Jim Schwartz, he's arguably the best defensive coordinator in the league currently after what he did last season. And the second thing that I have written down is Miles Garrett's the best player in the, in the NFL. And there's, I, I genuinely think that he's a complete game changer. The way that Jim Schwartz moved him around last season, there was literally a game last season where he blocked the field goal, had two sacks, had like three tackles for a loss. I almost puked watching the game, <laughs> uh, having a, a complete X factor on that side of the ball like they do with Miles Garrett, I think completely unlocks everything else. Yeah, I was just going to say that guy is an absolute monster, and anytime you have him on your defense, you're going to be really good. So their, their defense is, even aside from him, like obviously he amplifies how good they were, but 
I still think outside of him, they have a pretty solid defensive as a collective unit. They do. I mean, I really like their corners. Greg Newsom's honestly one of my favorite corners in the league. They have Denzel Ward, who everybody obviously likes more. He's the better player. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Jeremiah Wusu Karamoa, he's a very solid linebacker for them. He flies, man. He flies around. They just have like this personnel who like they're all dogs. And then you have Jim Schwartz who like is a scheme lord who can just like fucking scheme this defense up and they're fucking scary. There's really not much more to say about it than that. Listen, listen to some of these stats as a defense. Okay. So first in yards per game to they only gave up 275. First on uh opponent third down conversion. They only gave up a they only gave up a first down on third down 29%. Only 40 first in opponent fourth down conversion at 40%. And then this these passing defensive stats is pretty nuts. First in opponent completion percentage, 58. Uh fourth in opponent passing yards per pass at 5.5. Fifth in total passes per game at 30.9. Second in opponent passing yards per game, only giving up 171. Uh, fourth in interceptions percentages thrown, so 3%. And sixth in sack percent with 8.9. So they're literally top 10 in, every, in all of these stats. And that's that just passing. Their, de their rush defense is good. It's not as good as their pass defense. But if you can get it, if you can put a team on their heels and, and go up where – they're in a position where they have to throw the football. That's where the Browns thrive. That's repulsive to hear that. And, and to think, yeah. and to think that they're legitimately getting every single person back on that defense and keeping that same core, keeping the same coaching staff. I don't know, man. I, I think that this team has an opportunity to do something special this year. I, as, as much as that like haunts Browns fans because they haven't had a, that happened for them ever. Yeah. So like, it feels like bad to say that, but on paper, like this is one of those teams too, that like, man, like they they could be a Super Bowl team easily. It all, it all depends on Deshaun Watson. It really does. It really does. And the weaknesses that I've have written down here is just flat health. You need to be able to stay healthy. If you can have Deshaun Watson healthy, obviously you, you miss out on a year of Nick Chubb potentially. Um, if this team can find a way to keep their core guys healthy, like the quarterback position and have and play, have him play out a full season. Yeah. I, I just, that's a big weakness at this point. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I expect him to be better and he doesn't even have to be at the MVP level. Like I said, like you just need to get, you just need to have a feasible, healthy quarterback in there for a full season. And they this proved team it last is gonna, year. Yeah. And this team's going to be fine. They proved that. So 2024 predictions. I have I have them. It's hard to just sit here and say that they're not going to get better. So I have them one win better because I don't want to go like too overboard. So I have them as a 12 win team if they can if they can get that quarterback position figured out. But I do think that this is the year that they beat out the Ravens and finish first in that division. I, um, I yeah. think that they I think they're like a lock to finish first in the division. I really do. Didn't you pick them to finish first last year? I did, yes. Yeah, you're you're a big Browns fan. I've got them at eleven and six. I have them going the same record as last year. Yeah, that's fair. And listen, everybody, I'm not saying like last year was like a hot take, but like last year, if you rewatch what I said, I thought that their defense was going to be really good, and they were one of the best defenses in the NFL. And I don't think a lot of people had that on their radar. And yeah. I still I still think even with like all of those losses to be able to win 11 games and make it to the playoffs was important. Um you obviously got shit rocked by the Texans in the playoffs and Not if you great. listen if you listen to me and Noah during the the playoffs last season you would have taken the Houston Texans to win that game outright and we cashed on that but I don't know if you took that actually but I did take that. Okay. I had I th I had uh I think I had the Texans in like David and Joku receptions or something. Jeez, and yeah, he was ridiculous. So yeah, I mean, I think that looking at it like as a whole like before we did you say okay, you said 11 and 6 the same. I just yeah. I think that we look at their offense, you have Deshaun Watson, good run game, solid O-line. 
Amari Cooper still playing at an elite level. You add Jerry Judy, who, like you said, you think that he can go and be have a little bit more stability. Elijah Moore is a good gadget player for them. I don't mind him. And then that defense, that secondary is absolutely nasty. And then you have one of the best edge rushers in the entire league. I just really love the, this team. The best. The, the best. best. I I really love this football team. I I want to pick them to win the the Super Bowl, but that question mark at, at quarterback, like you said, is just going to hold me back from putting them over the hump because they just have a lot. He has so much to prove to be able to get put into like that, that like next tier of teams to be like a real Super Bowl contender. They need solid, consistent, healthy quarterback play. Yeah. Six games is not enough for me to say that he is going to take this team to the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm right with you. Um, I also feel like we should mention that Jameis Winston is the backup quarterback there. Hey, anything's possible. <laughs> With him as your backup, Jameis Winston at the at QB two, Tyler Huntley at three, and then Dorian Thompson Robinson at four. Honestly, that's a great quarterback room. All I would feel those... not, I would feel very comfortable behind if I had to have like if Deshaun Watson wasn't ready for like. Honestly, if they if he missed week one, I would feel comfortable having Jameis Winston come in and play quarterback the next four games. They go Dallas at Jacksonville versus the Giants at Vegas at Washington. Hey, we all of those guys have played in big games, like legitimately. Not Dorian Thompson Robinson, probably, but Tyler Huntley almost beat the Bengals the year that they went to the Super Bowl in the playoffs. He was a fumble. He was a a, a stretch out fumble return for a touchdown away away from winning that game. So, I mean, all of those guys have played big games, but obviously, we need that consistent quarterback play, but. Browns, it sounds like 11 to 12 wins. Um, I think you're going to finish first, first in the division. I don't know what Noah thinks about that, but I think it's the year for the Browns to take the next step. Listen, outside of all the Deshaun Watson shit, I love watching him play football back when he was in Houston and just lighting it up. So I would love for him to get back to that point. We do, condo- we do not approve of what happened off the field, but on the field, no. I think we both want him to play better football. No. What do you have done?